Yeah. Somebody once told me I, I wasn't ethnic looking enough, and I was like, okay, that hurts. In the acting? I was trying to get signed to an agency. Brent, I'm like, I'm biracial. And the guy was like, he's like, you don't, you don't really look biracial enough. Enough. Can you stay out in the sun this summer a little more? Yo, welcome back to another episode of the Immigrant Section. It's your boy, Boss Wahab, saying thank you for tuning in. I appreciate y'all as always. Uh, next Force Diversity show for Toronto is August 19th, and we're going to put one on the books for Montreal, August 31st. Look out for that. I'll remind you again, and enough of all that. With me today in the studio, new guest, old friend, my yeah, guy. Yeah. Late as fuck. Hey, don't talk it. No, but I'm it is late. over. I'm sorry. I would like to apologize just on the air officially for being late. I'm just an idiot. I forgot that I had to be here. Patrick Akeem, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. <laughs> What's going on, man? Thank you no, for coming out. Thank you for having me, bro. I've uh, been, thank uh, God you're at least close, living wise. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited to be here, believe it or not, even though I was late today. I've been watching your clips over and over since you've been doing this. And I was always like, does the boss not know that I'm... First generation I do know. from two I just, immigrants. I was I'm just like, under the impression that you would arrive late. And I was like, you know uh, what? Let me <laughs> give this guy the benefit of the you doubt. Know you know you were right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, this motherfucker. But yeah, man, welcome, welcome. And you are a Montreal... Uh, yeah, like I'm a Montreal export. Export, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, now I've made my home in Toronto for like, I believe this January is going to be my 10-year anniversary living here. Goddamn, and life before that was all Montreal. Life before that was a debauchery in Montreal, yeah. Ooh. Well, how, like, for those of uh, for those of us for the listeners that are not Canadian, yeah, just a quick thing. What is the difference between a Montrealer and a Torontoer? So the difference between a Montrealer and a Torontoer is very different. For one, uh, people in Montreal uh, they grow up segregated. Like you know, it's this, this, always this English, French English, French English. There's like, and there's a word. There's words made up there. Like they're. Uh, an English-speaking person will be called an Anglophone. Yeah. And a Francophone would be a French person. And, like, the city is divided by English and French. If you go anywhere east of Saint Laurent, French. Anywhere west, English. And they, and they stay segregated. They, I mean, they mi intermingle, but it's, it's definitely, like, this is the more French side of the city, and this is the more English side of the city. I, I had someone who on who grew up there and they're like you show up to parties and it's like clearly a French party or yeah. you show up to a party it's clearly an English party 100% and it's like uh, fuck kind of and you gotta like switch to that language it's not just like I mean like I lived a very English life in Montreal and I gotta be honest with you my French is so shit <laughs> that French people like every time I was like hey excuse moi je peux parler avec vous and they're like uh, your English chit I'm like, going to speak uh, <laughs> English, English to you. yeah just do just, English you're just do butchering you're the language me, yeah and I'm you're like, giving me anxiety yeah yeah I'm like uh, sorry my 8th <laughs> grade French is in a fucking amazing yeah I was looking for uh, what is it um, uh, what's that this guy doesn't even know English Man, fuck. Yeah, and then Montreal. The difference is, it's like a, it's a, a city where literally you could just do nothing all the time. Procrastination city. It's like if you just want to like drink, party, kiss beautiful people till seven in the morning, and repeat it all over again, and never get to what you're trying to aspire to do. That's the fuck a city for you, bro. Affordable rent. A f I dude, I for before I moved here, I was paying for a two bedroom in the Mile End, five hundred thirty five dollars. That's, and I think now the rent that sounds went like up. just a straight up lie by by no, standards I, here. I'm it's just like, not. you sir are a liar and a, and a late motherfucker. I mean, I think rent went up ten years, and like now that apartment's like seven hundred fifty, and people are like, oh, this is crazy they, expensive. They're, they're picketing outside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, it's freaking wild, dude. It's like I was doing some uh, gig yesterday with, with a bunch of Franco uh, francophones oh, from nice. Quebec, and yeah, we we're just talking about rent and all this stuff. And it's like they're just we're talking about like property values in Ontario ver versus there, and they're like, dude, people will sell their homes in Ontario. Like, let's say you know that old dream of I'm gonna buy a home, I'm gonna live in it, raise a family in it. Yes. And by the time I they're leaving school, I paid the home off. And it appreciated. Yeah, like, yeah. like that's all just pipe dreams. That's yeah. that's gone. That thing is so, that. That's like a movie. <laughs> exactly. That's Casablanca at this yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. point. But he was talking about how his aunt or something sold a place and bought it for like freaking like ninety grand like twenty five years ago. Yeah. And sold it now for like one point two and moved to like Mont or Quebec and bought like a mansion for like eight hundred grand. Like Quebec still has reasonable. A hundred percent. The the the. the 
debauchery that is real estate it's Ontario. Like, here, like all these houses. Like this is here. this is like a two million dollar house. You understand? Hundred percent. In For Montreal, those of you who don't know this is. A, like 900 square foot house like we don't have the basement <laughs> like, in montreal you would get this house for like six hundred thousand. yeah 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 yeah. And people are like that's expensive They're over like, there i'm like that but it, living here in toronto is to think of buying a home is so discouraging it's insane it's freeing too is it not because once real estate got so high it almost relinquished me of i knew i was like deep down i always knew yeah but you gotta you gotta buy. You gotta buy. Or right, because that's what you your parents are like. You buy exactly. a home, and then when you're older, you know, you retire. You or, sell it. Well, the whole immigrant money. vibe is why pay rent when you can you can it, own. Right? Yeah, but of it's course. Like, sure, you're owning, but you're paying property tax. You're paying upkeep. You're paying insurance. Like if you put if you do the math, it's like what am I really getting out of this? And if you buy a home at the peak of real estate, it's like three years from now. Am I gonna get two million for this fucking bungalow, dude? It's crazy. They did like a. They did a survey of like what you would need now as a household income. Two hundred twenty thousand. I saw yeah, that shit. I, I, I saw two hundred thirty, but we're in the same fucking ballpark. Yeah, it's yeah. all fake, to be honest. Yeah, and you're it's just probably like four hundred. I'm like, you know, and I remember my teacher in grade four being like, you know, if you make at least a hundred thousand dollars a fucking year, you'll be good. And I'm like, bitch, you didn't fucking put inflation, inflation in this whole fucking fucking. I've equation. been living up at this for thirty. Years. Yeah, I was like, man, she must know what she's talking about. Grade four, Mrs. Giffarelli. You run to the bank. I hit it. I'm at a hundred grand a year. And they're like, mm. they're like, Ooh. sorry, it's not eighty five yeah. anymore. Can someone, can someone tell him, it's over. You're te- you're just above the poverty line by yeah, yeah. twenty twenty two standards. Exactly. But uh, but yeah, man, what, the, what is your, like Patrick Hakeem, always since I met you, you look Arab, but your fucking first name was Patrick, so that I always was so like, it's this pa- guy's got- It's basically Patricio. Oh, I was I was going to say, I thought you were about to say Patrick. I'm like, no, fuck no. you, it's Patrick. <laughs> Don't say Patrick. Ba- Patrick. Ba- uh, ba- yeah, yeah. No, it's Patrick. So uh, my father's Syrian and my mom is Ecuadorian. God damn! You know what? For the episode, I'm just gonna write Patrizio. Patrizio, and I'm gonna and, I, and I'm gonna uh, Nimarando in the middle yeah. and put like some weird curve over the the O. Exactly, and two double for German double <laughs> yeah. O dots for no reason. <laughs> like, damn, this guy, he got the ultimate immigrant for this episode. Yeah, so it's like I was like, uh, so I was like a biracial child growing up in an all Italian neighborhood in Montreal, and that's why I talk like this. It, very weird and like. Very Italian, you. But like you fit in. Like your name is clearly not Italian, no. but looks wise, you fucking yeah, look yeah. Italian. I exactly. There's some guys that used to be like in my high school. Like, bro, how come your name doesn't end in a vowel? And I'm like, I don't know, because I'm not <laughs> Italian, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> that, bro, Italians will tell you that yeah. when I grew up. Every, all of us, our names will end in a vowel. I'm like, your name is Michael. It's like Michaelo or something. It's yeah, Michaelo yeah. or something. Michaeli. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you guys. So. Yeah, being biracial wasn't cool back in the day. Now it's like, yo, I'm biracial. Everybody's like, where? That's sick. <laughs> but it's rough when the the product of biracial ends up looking exactly like a race. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Like, you look Italian. You look Lebanese. You you don't look biracial. No. You look like... I look like a Greek You look Greek like a Lebanese, well. Greek, yeah. Italian. You look like a Mediterranean motherfucker. A hundred percent. You know? That's the best way to put it. Yeah, yeah. It's like I'm a chameleon. Even Moroccan. You could be Moroccan. You know what I that mean? That is but very you, fair. But you're like biracial. Yeah, that's... If you get into the acting game, you got to pull it. You're like, yeah, yeah, it's like, actually Patricio. Yeah, and I'm Moroccan. Yeah. Somebody once told me I, I wasn't ethnic looking enough, and I was like, okay, that hurts. Well, in, in in the acting? In thing? the industry. Like, I was I trying to like, I was, like uh, I was trying to get signed to an agency, you know, and, and talk about, like, what I offer. And I'm like, I'm biracial. And the guy was like, it's like, you don't, you don't really look biracial enough. Can and I'm like, enough? Can I- <laughs> Can you stay out in the sun this summer a little more? Can you? No, I think he wanted me to look more like ethnic in his mind. Like, Why do you have a cone hat? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> With yeah. fucking uh, rosaries all the time, yeah. just doing this thing. It's Can you pray more <laughs> and you know have some sort of taco or burrito constantly in your hand? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> disgusting. I'm Ecuadorian, not Mexican. Welcoming, but. yeah, <laughs> welcoming our newest member to the cast, Patricio. Yeah, Patricio. Hakimio. That would be. I think I'd. I'd probably get more festivals if I changed it to Patricio Hakim. It's just a very weird name right off the top. Spanish and then if clearly Arabic at the end. It's funny you say that because Edinburgh. I don't think they. I think they're still kind of like on that old, like uh, good old boy naming system over there. Because oh really? <clears throat> talking to a bunch of comedians, me and <clears throat> me and Conrad 
a couple years back submitted being like, we want to do like an African. For those who don't know, Ed- Edinburgh has the Fringe Festival every year. It's like the biggest blah, blah, blah. You go there, you do shows. And you do like and 30 shows in a month. Like every you do day. Way more. You do, th- it's 24 to 30 days, but you're doing shows apparently from 2 p.m. To, it's like comedy boot camp. Like you're right. doing shows, con- their shows, your shows. And, People uh, throw you on shows exactly. after. Yeah, yeah. And you just pass the bucket for money or you tr- sell tickets, whatever the fuck. But Conrad and I, it's funny how cocky you get in this day of like diversity because I was like, bro, we'll just do a fucking African show. Shit. Yeah, he's just, Nigerian. I'm Sudanese. We're in. We're in. 100%. Not only did we both get rejected, <laughs> but like I know a bunch of other comedians who are funny guys and, I, and I'm 100% cool mm-hmm. with these guys, but they all pitched the Canadian experience and like every single one of them got like every white name got in and and then my one buddy who's like with them in the group the one brown guy who's with them in the group he got denied but he's crazy flew, who flew he flew just to be on the show like either way because they as long as they get approved then he's got a spot every night okay you know yeah, what I mean? so, they'll be like yeah we'll just throw you on. exactly yeah. so i did the festival but like they rejected him you know got all the mics and the steves and the john like these aren't the names but like those are the actual yeah yeah, yeah. they all got in even like when I think of now who was talking about Edinburgh and I didn't even realize it, but they're all white people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and I, like, you know, it's like, uh, Aaliyah Kanani is the only ma- chick I know that right. actually gets in. Well, she got, she, but she's, she's got in a movie. Credits. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she was like in a fucking Canadian oh, best It's like a, it's like a masterpiece, yeah. apparently. And I'm like, yeah. Aaliyah? I just she's like, her. she's crying this shit. I'm like, damn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's wearing a hijab. It's next level, bro. Yeah, yeah. She's they, amazing. They gave her grants just when they saw the hijab. They're like, just, just sign the back of the check. That's it. Yeah. That's amazing. Endorse it, please. But like, it, it's it helps in North from North American standards. We're like, bro, I'll fucking say an ethnic name. I'll be in. You know, yeah, yeah. we're actually getting a little cocky because I Edinburgh's like, nah, nah. We're looking. Those guys all pitched the Canadian experience, and they all got in. We pitched the African experience growing up in Canada, and they're like, "Sorry, that's sorry. It's, it's too gonna, convoluted. Africa. No one's gonna relate to yeah, that. Exactly. We're in Scotland. The Canadian experience. Oh my. Yeah. That's like Africa for Scotland, right? Or not even Africa. That's like. It's like I like to hear how white people are away uh, from away Scotland. From, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, fuck it. Fuck it all at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, so I guess, did you stop applying altogether? I'm going to apply. The problem is with half of these things, you don't even know when the submission dates are. And no one talks about the submission dates until it's either done or it's the last day. They go... Then, then they're all like vocal about it. You guys make sure to submit, right? Oh, it's deadline is at three p.m. today. Like, it's like why don't you fucking say anything about? Yeah, this? there's like no announcements ever. No, no, there's everything is on your own. But I'm planning on submitting this year for next summer, right? And I'm gonna change the wording now to lean into immigrant in Canada, like really lean into the Canada right. part. Now seeing their success. Because I was leaning into the Africa part before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gonna... They're like, ugh. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if we can do that here. Maybe I'll put a John in my name at some point. I don't know. Abbas but... John Wahab. Yeah, I love they're that. like, we like it. Yeah, <laughs> Welcome we love aboard. It. Welcome aboard. Can you go by John? Uh, and, and and if I don't get in, I'll just fucking fly there next time. Like, fuck it. Fuck just, you just want to go just to experience what yeah. that's like? Yeah, yeah. that's cool, and, bro. And if I go and I didn't get in, I'm still gonna put Edinburgh Fringe on all my shit. I don't cool. Is there? <laughs> that's the beauty of this whole game. It's like, did you get a um, uh, a degree? Did you go to college? I did not. Okay, so if you go to college and get a degree, and then you apply to jobs after the fact, they have never in all of my years of doing it will ask you to see it or see a transcript. Oh, bro, something. it's it's the honor system. I didn't go to college, but I definitely have a bachelor in communications from on my CV or resume. Oh, beautiful. Case no, in point. Yeah. No one's ever checked it. I've had management like before comedy, I've been a manager at every single place I've ever been at. There's there's no checks and balances and you did your job competently, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. You just like, fake, I was fired eventually. I would just but... fake it until I understood and I'm like, oh yeah, I got this. Exact dude the the fucking degree does nothing for you. And it's the same bullshit with these, the credits. You're like, I could say JFL. I could say this and this. But that really just like, because I'm working with peers artistically, that, that you'll end up being like, that guy's lying about all that shit. Yeah. But 
it, no one will be like he didn't even do Edinburgh. If I went there, flew but there I for three put, weeks, I did Edinburgh now and not ever done mm-hmm. it, and no one will fucking check it. And it probably will do nothing for your career yeah. too. That's and the and weird why not? Part. Let's throw the Austin Comedy Festival in there. Oh, Remember? Chicago, Chicago, any of the ones yeah. where there's no confirmation. Like, yeah, you're like, man, this guy's no killing Q- it. Yeah, I didn't know Key West had a, a comedy fest, the biggest festival. I had no idea about that, and he headlined. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He did the Ronnie Dangerfield tribute show. Amazing. Wow. I thought he. Wow. <laughs> wow. He. How old is he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Old. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. But I, I just want to go out there and see what comedy boot camp looks like. Because everyone heard, comes back. I've to heard like, nightmare stories and I've heard great. Like, I think Ali Hassan would always tell me, like, he did, like, he had so much fun. And then my buddy Massimo went and he hated it for the month. So it's like, I've heard both sides. Massimo of it. sounds like a fucking Italian guy. You, that- you don't know Massimo, the comedian? No. Bro, Massimo the comedian is fucking. Montreal guy? So he was a Montreal guy. He lived here for a while. He lived in a house with me and Dave Mirage for a bit, and we had like the best time just like giggling every day. It's like a very Mediterranean household where we yelled. This guy looks Italian as fuck. Yeah, Massimo. Massimo Canistararo? Yeah, exactly. This guy a beast? He's a murderer, bro. This guy's one of the funniest guys in the city. Damn, he was an X-Men? Did, did he go to the States or what? He uh, got married to a girl. He's in New York City now. Oh, but he, he, Montreal. Yeah, he moved to New York City, and then uh, COVID hit, and his, he married some girl from Florida. They went back to her place, but now they're back in New York. He's on top of it. But he's like, uh, recently he did like a Dennis Leary, Jay Baruchel show where he had like seven episodes as a Greek guy. Fuck yeah. So this is this is like a made guy, right? You know what I he's mean? He's fucking like no, well-known. He's like been a 20-year, more than 20. He's like 25 years in comedy. He's one of the funniest guys. Fucking right. Well, how did this guy come up again? <laughs> because he hated at Edinburgh. Oh, what did he say went down? He's like, man, it's like you do shows every day. And then, you know, he goes, after a while, you're like, this is a fucking open mic. And I paid like this much money to go there. And then sometimes it's like. Because you fly and pay for the hotel out of your pocket. And yeah. the idea is the money you make from the bucket is supposed to offset those costs. And I think like he did. He, I think the thing is Ali probably made money for the bucket that even his costs. And I think Massimo might or not have made that yeah, money. Yeah. And he's like, fuck this place. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. That I, would make, I think that's what would come down to it. I think Ali's been in the game. He's more of a veteran than like, he's, he's like 10 years older than this guy, isn't he? Uh, yeah. But Ali started after him yeah. and Ali used to open for Massimo back in Montreal. Cause Ali's from Montreal. Originally. That's why Massimo's fucking angry. <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean? but, why is this guy paying off? <laughs> How is he recouping his fucking costs? So I knew those guys from Montreal before moving here. Damn, man. It's all, it's funny. You're like, there's all, comedy is just like high school. It's like, oh, yeah. You, you enter high school in grade nine and you hear about that fucking crazy senior that just left. Bro, you haven't heard of Massimo, bro? Yeah. <laughs> the guy, fuck, bro, he took every extinguisher in the school. He fucking lit the gymnasium on fire, bro. <laughs> he pulled every fire alarm. Bro, this is fucking crazy, bro. Rest in peace to him. He's dead? No, just rest in peace, man. He's a good guy, bro. He's out there. But yeah, comedy is definitely like high school. Very clicky and very like... Way clickier. Oh, 100%. Way clicky. High school, were you that guy that just kind of was like... Uh, you were like a, a lone... You had your group, but you were a lone range. You can mix with everyone. I was a mixer. That, uh, comedians are usually that. Yeah. I just say hi to everybody. Yo, what up? Dab you. Me too, hey, but hey. you're not at every party. You're not at every... I wasn't even like a like a hanger outer guy. I was just like trying to get... I was like immigrant mentality, like trying to get a job immediately, make money. I may have been having a, too much of a good time in high school. I was always trying to like have like a good time, always at a party. Trying to out like, Italian the fucking real yeah, yeah. Italian. I was just like, yeah, yeah. I tried to be like, oh, I'm going to pick up this Italian girl with no accent. I got no... Yeah, yeah. I got no vowel at the end of my name. Wash fucking this. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. But, so, but comedy, I find, is even more clicky. There's so... Comedy is closed groups where it's like sometimes I'll say hi and I'll get a shoulder because it's like... You were at the Royal Comedy Theater, and now you're at Comedy Bar. I fucking hate that it, shit. It, there's so much of it. It's it's finite. It's not even like loosey goosey. Some of it is like he was at this, and he was he was there, and he's this. And it's like, ah, uh, what is this bullshit, bro? Like I've been doing comedy for twelve years. I've never been like that. I fucking say hi to everybody. Everybody starts at zero. Hey, hello. I don't even give a fuck if you're good on stage. As long as you're a fucking good person and you you're nice to be around with in the back of the room or outside, that's all I give a fuck about. Once you're a piece of shit, I'm like, I don't need to talk to this guy. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Regardless of what your fucking material is. Exactly. Like, if you're a dick and, like, fucking J.J. Lieberman back in the day when I first came to the city, he was a dick, like, for years. 
And like I would see him do well on stage a lot. Sometimes I'll see a guy do well on stage. I'm like, whoa, that was sick. But like he was such a dick that I didn't even. But then eventually he kind of like he 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 he, he breaks Ooh. down. He kind of like gets friendly. Really, was a dick to you? Oh yeah, you know he's just like ah yeah, black guy, you know, fuck that white girl ah. Like you know what I mean? Like he's just like give me that cock. You know what I mean? Like, he's always been such a sweetheart. But yeah. there's he's, this dark side of. Him. But I would got total darkness. Yeah, for years. And then I was like, man, I don't want to talk to this guy. It's always like. It's never a conversation. It's always this like we're at, like we're on opening Anthony or some shit. Like we're on mic podcasting live. You know right. when someone's bringing it, like it's being broadcasted. Like relax, guy. We haven't had a real sentence exchange, you yeah. know. But then eventually it got good, and I'm like, oh, okay, this guy's like clearly he's like a good guy. He's like, you like shawarma or whatever. The fuck? And then it's like eventually it's like, oh, this guy's just food obsessed, you know. And a moron. Yeah, yeah. But it's funny because even you think, oh, a killer. I want to go talk to him, but it's like. It's it's their off stage vibes that really make it make them approachable or not. Yeah, bro, you just gotta like relax, bro. Everybody's fucking some sort of misfit that's doing this for like extra attention and the approval of other fucked. people. Yeah, yeah, we're all fucked. Of strangers. Yeah, of strangers. Yeah. And then the thing is, is like now you're now you you think you're better than somebody because you've been doing it for four years and you still shit the bed. Shut the fuck. Like it's like everybody. It is. We're all the same. It's so subjective. Oh, a hundred percent. I gotta ask. Uh, of growing up, the Ecuadorian and Syrian, which side of the family like accepted you more? Like, what did, uh, was one of your parents here and their family back home, or were both fa- extended families in the vicinity of Montreal? So my parents got divorced by the time I was three. They got remarried both by the time I was five. So I lived in Montreal with my mom and my stepfather, who is Chilean. So I grew up more. So that's even more confusing. See, more, super more Latino. Yeah. And then my father got remarried to a girl who was like Canadian, but of Ukraine descent. I thought you were going to say Eskimo. No, no, I wish, bro. <laughs> that would fucking so make I was it, in the bro. North, like on yeah, the yeah. Like, it was fucking. I was in igloos, you know, and shit. <laughs> icing for seals, but no. And uh, so I'd come, he'd lived here in Mississauga. So I'd come here for the summer, spring breaks, but I definitely grew up more. Latin because I'd only see my dad during summer uh, school breaks and summer vacations. And gotcha. then he had like Arabic friends in Montreal. And then I had uncles and aunts that live here that I would see just during that time. And your dad is Syrian. My dad is Syrian. Gotcha. But I also lived in a, although I lived in a very Italian neighborhood, right across the bridge was Ville Saint Laurent. Which they dubbed in the nineties Ville Saint Leban because Lebanese. pure fucking Lebanese. Oh yeah. So I grew up in a very Italian neighborhood here across the bridge. Fucking uh you're going to places to butcher a name called Abu Elias and <laughs> you're getting a filet mignon on a skewer and it's so it's like I, I had a lot of Arabic around me still in my city because it's like huge Lebanese population. A lot right? of bald with big mustache combinations. A lot of guys playing backgammon in front of their <laughs> shop. Yeah. It's gonna be Ali. Yeah. Exactly. That, uh, bro, that killed was there a beef between like the Italians and the Lebanese, because they're essentially okay. Italians and Lebanese. Have you noticed in cultures, the closer you are, the more they hate? In the Have 90s, they that? didn't think they were. So in the 90s, Montreal, so basically there's a law called Bill 101. <laughs> it's called Italian versus Lebanese. Bill 101 was made in 1978, was saying is if you come as an immigrant to Quebec and you, as your parents didn't go to an English school, automatically put in French school. Gotcha. So, so this is to guarantee the next generation, generation is more Frank French. Fun. Gotcha. Bill one hundred and one. So, so my at least my I was in English school. My mother went to school in the states, and uh, when the Lebanese came, predominantly like in the late eighties to early nineties, and then basically what happened is there's a huge blow up in French school in our neighborhood full of Lebanese kids, and we all used to go to a club called the Dome back in the day. And the Dome used to always have massive fights between Lebanese guys versus Greek and Italian guys together. Okay, so the Greek and Italians held, that was a collective. And I'm like, everybody here is the fucking same. You're all identical. You're all dipping bread in sauce. Like in some (laughs) sense, it's their hummus, your tzatziki, your marinara, fuck off. Like, I don't know how you guys don't see this. (laughs) And it just used to be, and now it's like, I think it's like a huge Lebanese population has now been there for like over 30 years. And now there's like, no beef. They're like, oh, we're actually kind of the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're literally like, if you like go. My to- mother yells at me and guilts me into feeling bad for not coming home on Sundays. I'm like, me too. Me too. It's like, come on over. Let's go dip some bread and some sauce. Yeah, bro. exactly. Get over here. 
like if you look at Greek food and Lebanese food, it's like there's very little difference. It's like there's a lot of olives, there's a lot of feta, yeah. there's a lot of like parsley, tabouli, grilled meats, grilled meat in a stick on a spick thing, uh, cheese made from goat. Like, yeah. <laughs> where is the beef? You look identical, you know, a hundred percent. Especially with the ta- they ta- on the looks wise, the Italian and the Lebanese look identical because they have their skin. They can range in kind of like complexion being very fair to kind of darker very and dark. have multicolor eyes. They look the same. Yeah, Italian, okay. Lebanese, the same. And people don't know that there's a lot of Aryan looking Arabs. Like it's always a shock to them. Like my dad was. But your eyes are so blue. My dad, blonde hair, blue eyes. Ferris skin. Hitler. Yeah. 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 That was Hitler. <laughs> He's Hitler. Uh, and then, like, there's a lot of red headed Lebanese. There's 100%. Ginger Lebanese. Ginger Lebanese. Lebanese. Yes. And then people, people are always that. like, You're Arabic? You're like, Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can dude. you not tell by this man's nose that he's fucking Arabic? <laughs> yeah. The three buttons undone. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you know he's either that or Greek or yeah, Italian. Yeah. Like Christian Arab, huge cross. He's like, This is all my faith. I believe in this. That's the funny. And then, like, Lebanese are like uh, Muslim or, or, or yeah. Uh, Christian. Yeah. Just like And on Syria. the Christian side, it's like, how at this point can you possibly be beefing with the Italians? At this point, it's just getting obscure. The differences are like, you got to like, are so granular and you got to look in the magnum. Pretty much the only thing is different is like, okay, we're from this geography. Yeah. You're from that geography. We're on this side of the Mediterranean. <laughs> but Italians have that cockiness that we're the best. And Lebanese have that cockiness that we're the best. So it's like, guys, feel, come on. I feel like most countries like greek people they think they're the best i greek pe- italians like really think they're the best like i went to japan y- they think they're the best too ichiban yeah. and all this shit and they think they're number one in everything you don't run and Colum- like in the world it's like colombians italians lebanese you don't get a lot of this vibe from like africa like i'm talking about people you meet that go bro i'm italian Bro, I'm Lebanese. Bro, you know we bro, invented the plumbing. Bro, yeah, hey, Lebanese, they invented everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bro, bro, we invented television, skiing, everything. Bro, you ski on those two fucking... Bro. You ever hear somebody from Lebanon go, in Lebanon, you know, you go on the mountain, you ski right to the beach. And you're like, that's... That, you don't ski <laughs> no, right to the beach, bro. A hundred percent, that's not... <laughs> Wallahi, Argiri, everything, bro. It's ready, man. <laughs> there is... <laughs> Mafi better hospitality than Lebanon. Beirut, well, bro. Cancun, eh, <laughs> Cancun, when? <laughs> you know, like... Yeah, like yeah. And Colombians too. South Americans, well, they all got a beef. I've met, I've met some Colombians that are sick, and I've met some Colombians that I are, oh, one time play, went to play pickup soccer, and I just overheard a guy talking. Any the number of times he mentioned Colombian, bro, I could just I'm like, this is why South Americans hate you, motherfuckers. You know, uh, they, he goes, they, yeah, as I'm, a you know, collective, I'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm Colombian, you know, because you know I'm, I'm from Colombia. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but as a collective, South America hates Argentina the most. Really, I th- I was across the board. They told me Colombians. Well, are Argentines so, more like? So basically, Argentina they think they're better than everybody because they're like they got Italian blood in them. And all the Nazis went there, didn't all they? The, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they got a little bit of that blue eyes. Yeah, yeah. So they and it's like people will be like a fuck like. Ecuadorian, they hate Argentinians. My stepfather from Chile was bordering like Argentina. He fucking hates Argentinians. They have like a comic book named uh, Conderito, where like the the villain in the comic is an Argentinian handsome guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like rap, rap the mole. And he's always trying to pick up Conderito's uh, girlfriend. And Conderito, the character, is a a, a Concord uh, that not well not a what's that big bird? Uh, the Concord, right? No, the, the Phoenix. No, no, no. The fuck, I'm an idiot. I thought that was a private jet. What's Concord? the biggest bird in wingspan? Wing? No, just like the most massive bird. Is it? A, is it a Concord? Am I insane? Gotta love Google. Yeah, please do it this for me. I'm also. You can see, now everybody's like, I can see this guy. What is go to the two. biggest bird? They're like flying, pterodactyl, flying bird, flying bird, <laughs> wandering albatross, condor. Condor. That's what I was trying to say. I said the Concord, which is a. Fl- that's a private which jet, a plane. Baby. Yeah. yeah, I'm an idiot. I know G five pilots on a first name basis. Okay, sorry about that. It's yeah. just a Drake lyric. So the character is a bird, and everybody else is a human, and of course his girlfriend massive tits because it's a, a Latino comic book. So she's a bird with massive tits. No. Oh. They're all humans. Oh, God. He's just a bird. Uh, no one understands. The main character. The main character. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. What's it called? Condorito. Is it popular? It's huge in Chile. Till this day. 
Till this day. Really? It's like the running comic book. When I was a kid, they used to give me like issues because I, and it's like, it's always like big tits and like they're like trying to pick up girls. And I'm like, this is for children. <laughs> yeah, they're like, a, we, are, we are preparing the minds of the future generation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, Simpsons does that joke. It's just Brazilians are yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. They're so open sexually. The South Americans, oh, it's yeah. like fucking. It's beautiful, bro. Like the the war, the rest of the world. It's the opposite of like the Middle East and Northern Africa. Total right. opposite. Um, but I had a, a teacher, a Chilean. I love Chileans, bro. Fucking. I had my woodshop teacher from high school. I still remember this guy. Was such a good guy. This pure Chilean immigrant. Always showed us a picture. Of this whole kitchen he built for hand for his mom back in Chile. Like he's right. like, I hand, hand tools, everything. It's like cabinets, drawers, everything, you know? Such a good guy. And it's it's funny how the in a country or sorry, in a continent, all of kind of like across the board, you kind of see very I don't want to say good people, but like you get, you run into these amazing personalities when they come from like the underdog countries. Right. You know what I mean? Like the Chilean and the uh, Nicaraguans. Man, every Nicaraguan I've ever met was a fucking amazing person. Like 100%. There's something about being from like Filipinos. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Filipinos are amazing. Vietnamese. Like the countries that's not winning in that area. Oh, 100%. I mean, I've met good Japanese people, but never had the richness of personality of like these southeast asian countries they're or very like, introvert of the japanese yeah the japanese are just like we're at the top just fucking succeed and well, i feel like now or like, they're super tattooed now they like ha- left they the system Kore- koreans because koreans are making that move to be the number oh, one number one yeah it's like now it's like i don't even know who's number one anymore when i think of south korea and japan i'm like oh. you're right but then i'm like you know but japan's what? had that superiority for decades so they wear it better but i'm like patrick let's be honest with yourself you love anime yeah you Do you love anime? anime? I fucking love anime. Oh, let's talk anime. <laughs> wait, wait. So you love anime? I like And you love wrestling. I love anime. How did you find a wife, my guy? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what that, the fuck? That's, that's and you're older than me. How did you, I, now those things are kind of like like wrestling is you know been the same, but anime is kind of being accepted as right, like right. But it's and then you get like these hot girls that are into anime now, and you're like, what the fuck? But that's Where like were deep you cosplay. Thirty years ago, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? you were a fucking like loser. Right it's there, like right? oh, I'm like ninja scroll. Everybody's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, sorry. I'm a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, gonna go as a fucking how, like a Tony. How did I find a wife? I you know. I hid these things from her, mm-hmm. and I just so she was like, "This guy's like, she's also a comic, uh, Jen Sakato. What's up? Uh, she uh, <laughs> shout out to Jen Sakato. <laughs> she saw me once on stage, getting kicked out of uh, a, a set because I was bothering some girl, saying she looked like uh, a character from Sesame Street, and they were, everybody was like offended that I was like just, say, but she was like talking. You look like a puppet. You're saying, yeah, I was saying she looked like a puppet, and then like I was got, I got banned from uh, the venue for one year, and she was like looking at me like this guy's kind of cute, and that's the first time she saw me, and I didn't realize he's got she, banning qualities. Yeah, he's like banning. I could build a life. It's a little <laughs> anti-establishment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and then uh, slowly but surely, I like I opened the doors. I'm like. Ah, and I have a comic book collection. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're like, she's like, you're still collecting? Yes. One day you're like, have you seen Death Note? Yeah. <laughs> she's like, what? She and she loves that. She loves anime. You, you both go to each other's house. You both have a shrine of anime. Like, I love Death Note. <laughs> because I'm older, sometimes my anime, I can't do all as much anime as I want because I share a TV with my wife, and it's got to be like selected. Like she's not home because even though my wife is of Japanese descent, she fucking hates anime. She hates anime. She you hates- know why? Because probably she grew up. Everyone expecting her to be super into anime or something like that. Yeah. Or no martial arts, for sure. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? It's like, that's why I hate stealing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, literally growing up, I always had this idea that, like, everyone expects me to steal. That's so crazy that you thought this. Yeah. I'm like, they expect me. Like, if something goes missing at a party or something, I'm like, if I go into a room and I see, like, now I'm like, I don't give a fuck. But, like... Well, if I saw a loose purse or a thing, I'm like, I got to get out of here because that's if that so thing crazy. disappears, I'm going to be blamed for that. That's fucking insane, yeah. bro. So uh, hyper awareness. But that's because of the stereotypes. That's what stereotypes right. do. That's why Jen hates it. There's no reason to hate anime. Well, she hates it because she hates when, uh, you know, People like, assume. 
young girls on anime start crying and they start like like but they do that with boy bands they do that with game of thrones she fuck, she's like can you turn that off i'm like i just want to finish oh. this episode of demon slayer like fuck off that's <laughs> that's i have this problem with all my friends who enjoy anime where it's like even like our girls will know that we're into anime but regardless of that fact we cannot really watch it with them around because it's like because it's kind of like those moments where like <laughs> it's like yeah. and you're just Passing the motions because you know the good part's coming up. And what's funny is after a while you see the comedy in it. You're like, oh, he's crying. (laughs) Yeah, 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 right. Like One Piece, you know. Anytime they cry, it's hilarious. But like, (laughs) but it's hard in that moment that you got to defend it. Like it's like a big tittied small girl like doing something. You're just like, a hundred percent. I, I know. I'm not. I'm not watching for this part. Watching for the conclusion (laughs) and the power ups. Yeah, exactly. Right. (laughs) He's about to go gear four. Yeah. Yeah. I love, man. I grew up hiding anime like crazy, dude. Really? You know what? Saying that, like, me growing up in an all-Italian neighborhood, I got to be honest with you, I always felt second class. I grew up always believing that I wasn't as good as everybody else because I was different. And I I never thought that I would, like, people would think I was stealing, but I always thought that, like, I'm last to be accepted for anything that we're doing in a group or like or you know what i mean like just like you know i remember dating girls they'd be like oh like it was weird that i was an italian with these italian girls like there was like a closed-minded mentality in the early 90s especially in those neighborhoods yeah i mean i grew up like that too i grew up around like a neighborhood that was adjacent to middle class neighborhoods but it was a subsidized government housing neighborhood that was all the African immigrants. And is this in, you grew up in, in London, Bar- London, London, Ontario. Ontario. Yeah. Sorry. Very comparable to Barry. <laughs> so like, that's actually funny. I think we have less blacks than Barry. But, wow. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's saying something. For all the people listening in England, like, what the fuck are they talking about? For those of you that don't know, <laughs> uh, London, Ontario is a place, if you do stand up comedy, most of your set is going to be dedicated to fighting some drunk guy that's in the audience. Ooh, I just <laughs> don't this, sweat. Like, good moron. catch, good catch. Um, uh, let me get it. Yeah, Keep yeah, talking. Plug what you want to plug. So, guys, you can see me. I'm actually recording an album this October at Comedy Bar. Dates to be announced with Comedy Records. Uh, it's my first album. I'll be. Uh, it's 12 years of work that I've put in, and I'm excited. Uh, I once recorded something about uh, five years ago, and I listened to it. And I'm like, I cannot have people think that this is my first album because this is hot garbage. And I was like... I got to reconfigure, figure out set again. But now I got to be honest with everybody at home. I'm very comfortable with the material I've developed in the last 12 years to put a nice 45-minute album that I'm personally going to be proud of. And I can't wait. Uh, We're going to do a 7, a 9, and an 11 o'clock show in one night. God damn. That was perfect plug amount of talking. I love that shit. Like... uh no napkins to be used. Just we're using yeah. paper today, but that's fine. Leave it. Leave it. Talk. No, it's I got all it, bro. Fucking. I've cleaned. <laughs> Do you know what you're gonna call it? Ah, fuck, bro. There, there, there. Part of me that wants to call it Arab Tino, but I'm like, this is. I, I think I want that so I could get more of like the ethnic plug. Like, oh, you. It's just good for publication. Public right? publication. But that's I, why I kind of I call mine Safe Black. Just to be like, it's yeah, like, like ah, yeah. Abbas Wahab, yeah. Safe Black. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit I do, so it's like it's not like if a album is called Safe Black and you look through the track list and there's no track called Safe Black, you're like, what the fuck? Like, I but do, there's a track called. I do one bit about being biracial and then it's like I go on different topics. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. like for me, it's not on that at all, right? Like, for the most part, but still, I was like, it's kind of clickbaity and it's justified. Let's get it. And I feel like. When you hear the word Arab Tino, you're like, "What? It, well, oh, this guy's half Latino, half Arab. Oh, Arab Tino. It adds up. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, it's like the one bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Instead, you're like hiding. It's called hiding anime. Is what it's gonna yeah, end yeah. up. Yeah, hiding called. anime and wrestling. So if you had to choose anime or wrestling, 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 bro, I I took one break from wrestling since I was five. Two thousand and eight to two thousand. 13. Literally, the financial crisis hit you hard, huh? <laughs> I was like, oh, buddy, <laughs> I can't afford this, this cable anymore. like crazy. I can't watch a DDT. You no, know I, I, I think it, it got boring on WWE, and then it got exciting again, and then I haven't stopped till now. What, Rest, what do you tell people when people go like, uh, bro, it's fake? I'm like, bro, do you watch Stranger Things? Like, yeah, but that, that that's uh, like with a script. 
Yeah, so is wrestling, bro. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, it's yeah, yeah, but that's like with kids. <laughs> I just like, it's like, I was like, I'm like, why does it bother you so much that I like this? <laughs> like, what, right. what what do you like it? And you're mad that you can't like it as much as you once did. You like it, bro. No one cares. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, do what you want to do. It's like uh, most people don't tell me it's fake but uh most people are like really and i'm like i find wrestling fascinating i find people that want to be wrestlers there's like i i they're just like comics you know they go on the road they travel for four hours to get 50 bucks maybe the fucking promoter stiffs them and you're there and it's like it, 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 they're doing it because they're it, passionate about something and i just love the theatrics of it i love like the psychology of there's this guy who's good and there's this guy that's gonna cheat and you're gonna hate him and then sometimes that guy that cheats you end up loving him because he's it's such a male a, soap yeah. opera it's a soap you know? opera it's a male soap opera i never realized what the the heel and the the hero and like all that and type then of there's stuff. the tweener what's that so the tweener <laughs> is a guy who was meant to be a heel but the people put him over so that the he's heel's the cheered. bad guy right right so a tweener is a bad guy that people cheer. So he's like Trump kind of thing. Or like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, I thought oh, he was a heel? He started as a heel, got so over that he became uh yeah, like a like hero, a hero. Yeah, much. the hero. Yeah. And then he's like, I'm gonna fight my boss. And everybody's like, Yeah, punch your boss. You know what I mean? And I was like, And what about Undertaker and Kane and all those? Were they, were so they all Undertaker heel? has been a heel and a face, back and forth. Face is hero. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. A and baby face, but Mankind face. was a heel? Uh, mankind was a heel and then a baby face and then all I when I watched wrestling was back in Oman so I grew up in Sudan was I born there zero to three then Oman uh, Middle East Muscat uh, three to six and there wrestling was rigged so I would always watch wrestling back then that was the, the time of Yokozona yeah, yeah. it's like back bigger was, than life You're yeah. like, was he a heel or a hero he's definitely a heel okay so little fact about Yokozuna not even Japanese <laughs> Polynesian I love it. like, and fuck him the Ro- and his whole family. He's Polynesian and just the, like the Rock. He's the Rock's first cousin. What? Actually, actually, is Yokozuna still alive? Yokozuna unfortunately passed too much complications of heart obesity and, and big shit. and yeah, for his sure. heart was too big for this world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rest in peace. That's the anime type of living there. And apparently, like he could not stop eating. Like they made documentaries about how his life fell apart. Damn. Yeah, because the the eating the size was how he got the money, they and then that ended. Sent him to like fat camp, like food rehab, pretty much. They sent him to food rehab and fat camp, and he kind of like he didn't want to do he it ate anymore. The instructors, <laughs> Yo, I don't know. It's so like crazy. Ah. I think it's so crazy that WWE is like you're getting fat. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna send you to fat camp. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the- they're like. Uh, your fatness level is no longer polling well. Yeah. So we're going to do a little bit of yeah, And you're not as effort. athletic. Because he was athletic. When he first came out, he'd do like these crazy kicks. And you're like, whoa, this guy's massive, bro. And then he did kind of like um, Somo style, right? Yeah. Da, yeah. Da. He was Yokozuna, which means a, a grand champion in, in sumo Japan. wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Motherfuckers Polynesian. <laughs> the yeah. Japanese, like, but the Japanese, I bet, were still kind of rooting for him, right? Because he's the yeah. closest to... Uh, but you know, Japan obviously has like their whole... Oh, they got their own industry. It's they, huge. They have Japan, Japanese pro wrestling is massive in Japan. But it's it, it's still scripted. But is it more raw? Or so is basically, it? It, there's, so the way WWE is, is like a Jerry Springer soap opera. Gotcha. And the way the Japanese do it, it's like a, a sport. And there's no, there's, yeah, there's cheating and stuff like that, but people are trying to be the champion or win tournaments to become the champion. So it's more like they do it more like a, like UFC. So you'll see like a guy like training for a big match and doing squats. Oh. And, like, and then the Japanese audience, I went to go see pro wrestling in Japan when Jen and I were there. Very different. Yeah. So, you know, here's everybody's like, yeah, fuck it, kill him. Over there, everybody's quiet when they're impressed by something. They clap. And there was a guy, a Japanese wrestler called the Tokyo Pimp. So Tokyo Pimp comes out with these two hot Japanese women, bikinis, you know, G-strings. They're dancing. They're grinding. In the States, people would lose their minds. Or even here in Canada, just fucking losing it. Yeah. Yeah. The fucking place. They come out quiet. They're just grinding to silence? The guy... Nobody in the audience is making a peep. I, and I'm in Kyoto watching this wrestling event. I'm like, 
weirded out. And all you see are screens being lit up because everybody's filming these girls in silence. Like everyone. Every every man in that room, there's a blue light, light screen, and I was like, "This is cr- like crazy! Like, yeah. make a that noise!" Bit, that yeah. bit Japan, it's so weird. Let me say, I did not respect pro wrestling until I went to go see in Oakland, California, like a big <laughs> op- a big amateur pro wrestling operation. Right. Let me just say first thing. The stickiest floors I've ever come by in my oh, life. Oh, 100. Like I'm talking shoes almost being fucking adhered. Like the sock is. I'm seeing half my sock every time I take a step. Like the stickiest floors. And you're the, like, can you guys pass a fucking mop in here? Yeah, One mop job. Just that's beers, all I'm asking. Just yeah. like, and everyone stands. There's no seats in right. the am- and am- <laughs> But it was fucking awesome. I was there for two hours. Like. First of all, every wrestler has their merch table set up. Oh, like yeah. tw- that's when I realized they're just like comics. Yeah. Because the guy's just behind. He's got like 12 shirts and no one's looking at his table. Someone's looking at the others. He's just kind of on his phone. It's flea market vibes. But then when you go in, it's all these like, they look like they clearly have day jobs and desk jobs. But right. they're like, they've all got a fucking, the Crimson Countess and she's got a fucking outfit. And, and, she's, she's got and like- the jumps are real and the falls are real. Bro. Like all the impacts are real as fuck. I'm right there like. This is why they're all on like pain meds. No, these are pain real meds. fucking falls. Or, yeah, they're all on pain meds, and like even like, like even the chops, like the, when they slap each other on the chest, it's like you're not thinking that you're just really getting slapped in the chest, and you're taking it, and you're like, that's what that's what. Yeah, it when is. there's two hundred people and you're still hearing the <laughs> yeah, smack, you're like, you're like that's, that's real. That's not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not fake. He's not putting a fucking weird thing on his hand and like. But yeah, it's good fun, bro. You go, you go with your friends, you have some beers, you eat some bad food, you scream at somebody in a ring, you go home. What's what's the problem? Ah, yeah, wrestling is a vibe. Like when I actually saw that, I'm like, oh, okay. And then after that, I started getting into all the wrestling, all those years I missed, I was like exclusively on like Dragon Ball Z and like I was like fully in Dragon Ball Z and the fucking Are you a big Dragon Ball Z guy? Big Dragon Ball Z guy. Have you sure. watched Dragon Ball Z Super? Super? Oh, of course. I love have, it. I have not. Oh, yeah, I love you. You're like fight me on this. No, no, I'm not saying that I I think that I, it's I'm, great. I'm very intrigued. It's great. I just have another time and now it's like 130 episodes But this is all you got to do. Yeah. Watch the first like 20 or 30 episodes to set up what's happening. And then just skip to the universal martial art. That is what Dragon Ball Z mastered. That is what the world wants to see. I want to see an anime version of a world martial art tournament. And right. they keep making it bigger. It was the, the tournament in the dead world. Right. Now it's a tournament of the universe. And it's the same format. And it's new characters. But I'm intrigued. It's, There's like Black Goku from an alternate dimension. There's it's like, not really like their own characters from alter, alternate dimensions. Right. It's like new characters and Saiyans. That but there like, is a, a character, B- Black Goku. Yeah, it was like Oob or some shit. Wasn't oh, it? it was Oob. I see. I didn't know like this. Black like, Majin. So I'm just Boo. like seeing it like in trailers on yeah. YouTube. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? And I'm like, I gotta know. But it's it's too like it's intimidating sick. to start because then I was like, now I'm 131 episodes. I know, in. but the Universe Monsters tournament is like 60 episodes or something. Like okay. That. And you know how it goes. A lot of it is filler. Like you just kind of epoch yeah, yeah, yeah. two times speed or whatever. Krillin's crying. I get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. There's like <laughs> four people you want to watch their matches, but yeah, Krillin, the, all of their auxiliary support, they gotta fight each other right <laughs> you know what i mean it's like krillin's up against number six of that team let's watch two episodes of this and now with the, the highest form is blue hair oh uh, the highest form is like white energy like oh. i think it was but there's like super saiyan god and ultra instinct dude ultra instinct. so ultra instinct and now at the end of this vegeta has become stronger than goku is that the thing no, Goku always wins. Okay, so he ended up because the, he, I think he surpasses him, and then so it's I, that back and forth. I'm of reading like, like bad Wikipedia summaries to be like, <laughs> uh, okay, I think I know what's happening. It's like you're you're reading so much, it's like just watch it. This is the ultra ultra instinct music. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love He's it, like, dude. Whoa. It's like oh shit, you know. It's like it it goes back to that first Super Saiyan moment on Namek when he first went Super Saiyan. It channels that thing of like, there's no, there's nothing else that can be done. He must, and Ultra Instinct is like, he doesn't think about anything. He's like maximum fast, maximum strong. And it's not yellow. It's all like, 
It's like this white haze. I don't know. The, the first time it went Super Saiyan was like that massive. To to me, till this day, I still remember watching that. And like now, it it gives me a shudder down my spine when I go watch it, because I just remember experiencing that and the build up. It was literally like a hundred. Dude, that fight is like twenty nine episodes. Just the fight between Freeze. It's like just but it's not even the fight. It's 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 good. Vegeta saying for a hundred episodes, "I'm a Super Saiyan." Yeah. Oh, I'm not. Are you a Super? And he kept saying, "Is Goku the legendary Super Saiyan?" Yeah. And then and then he just was just doing Ko Ken. Yeah. So, so we just we didn't know. And then the moment the transformation happens, we're like, "No, this is so." Ah, you know what I mean? Like it was like glowing. And yeah. Just like damn, dude. Oh, let's go back to that, man. The bro, Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> first Super Saiyan music. Like, there's something about the fucking Dragon Ball Z, dude, that Goku goes Super Saiyan for the first time. Oh, my God. Now, when you watch Dragon Ball Z, are you watching in English? Yes. Yeah. Okay, because Funimation did an amazing dub job. But normally, you watch it on sub, right? I usually watch every anime Japanese... Uh, you know, is it with sub? <laughs> He's like gearing like, up the super. Su- it's twenty episodes of this. Yeah, it's just twenty episodes. Oh my god. I remember with different music. They didn't. Bu- this one, they didn't build it up. The Vegeta Super Saiyan theme. Oh, every, the Vegeta's first time Super Saiyan theme is amazing too. Don't don't. Oh my God, dude, that's on for twelve uh, two hours. Oh my God, all that stuff marks like. That is a milestone in my life I can't even describe. Oh, like yeah. the Super Saiyan moments. I that it makes me feel extra nerdy, but I fucking love it. I don't care. But if who gives a fuck? Be nerdy as much as you want. I know. You know? It's like ner- nerdy is the new hot commodity too. That, when I first moved to Toronto, I did an audition where they lined three actors up. It's like these it's like all these fucking just whatever the fuck. <laughs> And they it's in an audition, and they go, right. "Tell us about yourself," you know. And <laughs> all all of these, like you know, this like young, like handsome guy and this young beautiful girl there, and it's me, right? You know what I mean? And, and the guy goes, "Blah blah 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 blah," but I'm also a nerd. I la 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 and at this, and then the sec- the girl, she does the exact same thing. She goes, I, "I've always loved theater. I've this. I've I love my favorite place, but I'm also a nerd." <laughs> I'm like. Like that's what the industry is looking for, the beautiful right. nerd. The beautiful right? nerd. Yeah. And I ended up getting it. I'm like, I'm not a nerd. But I am was probably the biggest nerd. Yeah, 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 like, I'm like, I just give me this role. I just crack some you're jokes. Just listening they laugh. to the Vegeta Super Saiyan yeah, music in one headphone. You're like, I'm not a nerd. Yeah. Like, is this guy getting CIA style feedback right now? What was that? Oh man. Did you ever do acting? I I started as an actor. I'm a full actor. I've been in uh being human. As a guy who was possessed by a ghost and Blue Mountain State as That's clearly someone who watched your stand up comedy. Yeah. <laughs> it was like we can use this guy. <laughs> and Blue Mountain State was like a like a Oh, you were in Blue Mountain State? I was in the last episode of the second season as a guy who was a a, a fan uh, like a raged out fan full of face paint and like uh, they gave me like uh, pads with spikes on them and I was like Yeah I started a we, we started riots and then it's like Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, it, does it? Nothing really comes around that much anymore. It's like weird now, huh? Well, like, are you still going out for auditions? And- well, I took like to be honest. When I started stand up, I got so obsessed with stand up that I didn't give a fuck about acting. Man, I just wanted to get good at this one thing, and I did not care about acting or writing. I just, you know, it became like this. It becomes like a drug, and you start chasing the dragon. You want to like recreate the best set you've ever had over and over and over again. You're going out every night, doing two, three shows a night. You're a young comic, and you're just fucking. And I just, I didn't have the capacity to think of anything else. I just had blinders on. I was like, I just want to get good at this craft that I 
passionately love more than any of this other shit. Yeah, I get that. Because acting is just like you're just sitting and waiting and waiting right. for them to... They, they, you're like, oh, you can go to your trailer and you just sit there. It's like a cell because Dude, you're not a big actor. Yeah. You're like, it's just like a room. I like, literally just put a video of it. It, it feels like if the uh, airlines made a hotel room, you know? <laughs> it feels like you could be in the sky. You know, like if a, you when you're in that transport trailer, holding cell, they're like, you didn't really do anything wrong. We're gonna keep checking exactly. on you. Stay in here. You're not being criminally detained. Yeah, yeah. This but is we don't a feel technic- good letting you cross just. <laughs> this yet. is an administrative technicality. Uh, you can The doors are locked though. I recently got back into auditioning. Uh, my uh, agent uh, at Williams Hirsch Talent. She started sending me out. I signed like last year, and I just decided like I need to open this side. So I've been auditioning for commercials and. Uh, and, uh, you know, a couple of features here and there. Uh, I've gotten a couple of callbacks, but I, I suck. One sec, one sec, one sec. Hey, babe, lower the volume. Babe. Babe, lower the volume. Thanks. <laughs> so keep going. Burp! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, did you not, you, did you not hear yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, hearing yeah. it on the audio. But yeah, so I, I started again, and you know, I, I mean, why not? It's like now that I've I've I've, I've been doing stand shit, fuck, I've been doing stand up for twelve years. I'm like, I need to open up other avenues because you know, clearly in Canadian entertainment, if you only do stand up, yeah. it's not really uh, plentiful, as they say. And even if you do do both, you know, it's, it's like- very hard. It's a very tough. But we, you know, we're second citizens in our own country to American talent. And I'm guilty of this. It's like when I watch TV and music, I like it's. I tend to go American first. It's better though because it, it's more of like their system is a meritocracy in the sense of like it's a capitalist system. Like the money goes to the better thing, whereas here it's a competitive the money goes to the market. agenda thing. The money goes to the lesbian baseball team and the, well, the trans that- basketball team. But it's like if you're if you're like a regular team, you're like, well, we. We need everyone to know that Canada is supporting all the new cultural wind, whatever way it's blowing. So we don't care about a script. We just we need identity politics being like. And what grant funding? Will exa- that open? Exactly. That's what it's all about in Canada. Whereas in the states, it's like independent funding independent and it's competitive. Funding. And they're like, "This is great. We're gonna be able to sell this because it's fucking awesome." Yo, and just on cable in the states, you got like a hundred different channels that are competing to be the best or to have something that's special and different. We're here, they're like, mm, we don't, you know, we kind of want it to be like Breaking Bad, but not Breaking Bad because uh, some old p- person in Saskatoon won't like the drug yeah, use exactly. there. And you're like, I, then I can't do Breaking Bad for you, bro. Yeah. And it's it has got to be like a, a level of diversity that just is so contrived. And, just and then like, this like, might not be popular, but I think Bell Media also killed the star system here. Did like, they? So Bell Media... The Bell Media grant. I've been rejected they, by that. They bought uh, Much Music. Okay. So back in the day when I was a kid, like Much Music had panels that were comedians from Canada. They would have, you know, a uh, video on trial and you'd get like people making comments. And, you know, they weren't getting paid. They were getting paid a hundred bucks, but the exposure yeah. was big was because it was, was national. Yeah. So you're making, in sense, you're, you're helping these comedians create a little star system. Oh, I saw you on Much you Music. On trial, yeah. Please come do my show. Here's a thousand dollars, this and that. And then Bell Media bought it and they realized that, hey, we can make all this original program that is costing this much, or we can just call the, music, the channel much, drop the music part, and then just buy episodes of Seinfeld, Simpsons, King of Queens. Stuff that can't, and then do, can't go wrong. Replay it license, yeah. over it. And, over. and that, now if you go on much, that's all it is. You watch Married with Children, all these old American shows. Yeah. And that's all it is. There's no VJ. There's no this. And people like YouTube killed that. I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure somebody was like, why are we making this for this much when we can make this much and retain the same advertisement? And you're like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It just like a, it's a, it comes down to a financial equation, you know? Which sucks. Which sucks. It just pushes everyone to the America. They're like, oh, okay, we don't have options here. Fuck you. You know? Uh, do you think you'll ever move to the States? Yeah, I do. Really? That, yeah. and, and she's down with that? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I want to. I want to go to New York, you know? That's fucking crazy. Yeah. I'm already talking to a lawyer. 
that's great. Yeah. Do it, bro. I, I want to live vicariously through you. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, I'm here. But Massimo, he's still complaining. But bro. when you see Massimo, you'll be like, oh, this guy's fine. You're the same. I heard Ambrose like, suck, bro. I heard you send me a text. Like, Don't bro. fucking get me started on that. Like, this guy's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, right. This guy's <laughs> a beast. Yo, okay. I, I end the show with uh, three questions where I get a new guest. 100%. Uh, did you get beat? Yes. Was it in excess? Or was it like culturally appropriate? It was in excess and then it stopped. I've gotten the belt. I've gotten a toy whipped at me. I've coat got, hanger? Uh, I think I've gotten the coat hanger. Ooh, that's No, you know what? I don't think. Just maybe I, the belt. The belt many times. Yes. The belt and I hated the belt. The belt is bad, but you know, like when you get fresh, fresh immigrants, they use the phone wire. The, the old phone cable oh, that was I, the ultimate thing that was like bad, fuck, that's a bro. whip that's a whip a hundred percent yeah and then like by the time i was like 10 or 11 i was getting big that it was yeah like, I, was like, like, Yo, I don't give a you're fuck. like no yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it hurts or you catch their yeah. arm and, and they're they get, like oh, they, they lose it like, yeah you caught my arm you should allow me uh, yeah. to yeah. beat you yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, okay, what is something that you could go either culture with this or both? Uh, what is something uh, either the Syrians or uh, was it uh, Ecuadorians. E- Ecuadorians do that you haven't seen anyone else do ever? Either there or... So Ecuadorians are special for making empanadas out of... Oh, I've been to Kensington Market. Yeah, yeah. But the, the empanadas, their specialty is uh, instead of using dough, they use they make a dough out of the the, the plantain, uh-huh. and then and they specialize in like plantain empanadas, and then Syrians, what, what, they, they, they got a war thing going. <laughs> they got a war thing going, and then Syrians, like to be honest, like I feel like whatever I've seen Syrians do that no one else does and like they're like they do that in lebanon too it's like syria and lebanon are so similar yes 100 percent. so it's like i i don't i'm not gonna say anything about syria because i'll just feel like i come ignorant okay my buddy's mom is syrian his dad is lebanese he just said he was like lebanese his whole life you know he right? just he was like i don't want to talk because his mom would like grew up in like didn't grow up but like i guess oh. was in lebanon too but like syria and lebanon are like they're kind of the same, you know. Being a sim- Syrian immigrant in Lebanon, I'm like, how do you tell? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, you can't really tell. This guy's not really Lebanese. He looks like us, has the same accent, but I'm sure he's Syrian. Uh, and final question: What? And you've already kind of answered this, but maybe on both sides, who is like when your parents talk shit? Who is the butt of jokes culturally? You know what I mean? Like you said, it was the Argentinians for uh, uh, the Argentinians. Uh, was basically big in our in my house because my mom was Ecuadorian, my stepfather was Chilean. Yeah, and so my, they just go off on Argentinians. And to be honest, my dad, uh, he was he was laid back. He didn't really talk shit. Like he was never like fuck the Egyptians, pieces <laughs> of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're all fucking, they're all blackmailers. And yeah. like, he never had that kind of talk. Oh, okay, that's sick. So that's he, rare. Was yeah. he was born here? No, so he was born in Syria, moved here when he was like 20, but my dad was a very social dude. Like, he was very likable and funny. Gotcha, okay. So I don't recall, other than him being likable and funny, I don't recall him really- He's not a shit talker. Of any race uh-huh. or any like, he was- he wasn't about that. He didn't point people out and be he wasn't like, like, this, guy's, like a fu- this guy's a he fucking wasn't like, Greek. He was like, those black guys are going to steal. Like, he wasn't yeah. like, he didn't ever, he would. No, he I had, ha- I just, and I was over there like, they think, and I, <laughs> they he's think not I'm, saying it. I'm looking back and I'm like, they think I'm going to steal. You're like, I'm studying to be an yeah, engineer, yeah, you fucking yeah, idiots. Yeah, Fuck like, off. Yeah, don't steal the book, man. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't experience that, but my mother definitely like, my mother was cross, so like she hated Peruvians because there was like an Ecuador between uh, Ecuador and Peru had a war for like a hundred years. And I was make fun. I was like, "Oh, you guys are shooting uh, blow darts at each other." Yeah. She's like, "Shut up, the fuck up." Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those like uh, default hates that it's like, "Hey, we had a war with them." Yeah, you yeah. know, like it's like the Turks and the and Greeks. The Greeks. Yeah. Like, I had a Greek guy on, and and I was like, "He's like, well, I gotta say, Turks they enslaved us for I'm like so long, four hundred years <laughs> ago, my G." <laughs> yeah, right. He's like, "Yeah, well, you know, the the baklava is on point, so you know." I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna look. But bro, this has been a pleasure. Oh, man. thank Please. you so much for having me. Look into the camera. Tell the people where they can find you. So, I mean, I already told you guys where you can find me, but I, I do like, like your handle and whatever. I'm gonna put it in the oh, description. But. So my handle uh, for Instagram is at Hakimness. My handle for Twitter is he enjoys pizza, 
And look, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm in my like mid 40s. My tweeting, you'll be like, this guy hasn't tweeted since 2020. No, I'm lying to you. Since like 2016. Like I don't, I don't care about Twitter, Instagram. You'll see me post pictures of my stand up or shows. So just Instagram is the place to see me at. I'm going to put that in the description. Follow him so you can get on his album recording in October. Yeah, which is going to be fire. Look out for that. Uh, from my end, follow the socials. If you want to get bonus episodes, behind the scenes content, all that good stuff, and support the show directly, patreon.com slash the immigrant section. Thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate y'all. It's your boy, Boss Wab, signing out. Thank you for coming. Thank in, you for having me, brother. Peace. Peace. Peace.